Comrades, um, thank you for coming along today. Uh, this is a, a series of films that we're trying to put on. Um, Jim Bradbury, where is he? I can't see him. Started it um, a couple of months ago. I don't know if any of you were here for the film that was screened here on Peter Lou. Um, and today, of course, it's about the Durham's, Durham Miners Gala and called The Big Meeting. It was filmed last year, I think, that's right. But the important thing is, what we're trying to do is uh, rib the films, and we're going to be continuing on, and before I say that, I should say we, it's principally Joe McCluskey, Jim and Becky Sargent, who sits at the back, and also Sam and Paul that sits down the front here. The idea is to put on a number of different events, in films as well, that talk about our um, trade union history, our political history, obviously from the slant, from, from a left-wing perspective, and, um, and try and build a, a narrative, one that's been lost over the years and has, has sort of lost its way. And that's what we're trying to do. And this is just a start of a process. Um, we've been considering in the um, future, in the near future, maybe even having a, a sort of left-wing film festival where we're going to have a series of films uh, put together where people can come along oh, maybe over a long weekend. That's still in the very early planning stages, but you get the idea of where we're going and what we want to achieve and and try and, <coughs> and rebuild, um, particularly within the working classes, but also across all classes, that, that sort of a message that we once had, particularly in places like Stoke, in relation to the trade union movement and the working movement, and 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 we feel that the best one of the best ways of doing that is by learning our history. Now I know that a lot of you in this room don't really need to to learn because you're probably far better than I am, more learned on the issue. But the one area that I want to talk about tonight is all grief. Now, all grief, as many of you in this room will know about, the 18th of June, 1984, in this small area outside of Rotherham, began to be the, I think, the, the epitome of, of, of all that we were fighting for in the 80s under Thatcher. By myself, I was working for the National Health Service and the, uh, uh, in A&E, &E, uh, and the hospital that I was in was suffering cutbacks and being closed down. So all areas across the country were suffering, but no more so than, of course, the miners and the 180,000 miners that fought for what was their livelihoods and their communities um, uh, that were being um, uh, 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 cut and destroyed by a Thatcher government that not only hated uh, the miners, but hated the trade union movement and hated nationalisation, wanted to privatise it and came into office to destroy, to destroy um, uh, the uh, uh, NUM, to destroy the trade unions and, and more particularly to destroy the mining industry and, and in a way, in a certain way, she obviously succeeded. Um, but Orgreave itself became to be the, the, the uh, epicentre the, it was more than just a, um, some people use the word battle, but I'll come back to that in a moment, uh, of all grief. It was a fight, a front line, where the people that were there protesting were not just standing up in relation to the, mine, uh, the miners, but they were standing up to a whole movement, a whole trade union movement, a whole working class movement that was under fight, that was under siege at the time. But what really um, stood out and what we know 
since then is that this was all pre-planned. Um, that it was pre-planned by the government, it was pre-planned by McGregor, by the National Coal Board. Um, they had um, uh, um, effectively told Scargill that this was going to be a, uh, an important area for them and, and maybe to take their eye off him, to take his eye off the board, maybe focus somewhere else, but that was all a ruse. It was a ruse because he knew that they were going to focus upon Orgreave and that's what they did. And uh, they um, then laid siege to them. And it was, I think, as, as Tristan Hunt said, a sort of medieval siege of what took place because the police came armed and ready um, they were using shields that were never used on mainland Britain before. They were using the horses that we knew about, know about, and they were using those long truncheons. And they came there to maim, and they came there to hurt, and they came there to destroy. And the peaceful protesters that had turned up at the stage um, had no idea what they were walking into. Uh, it, it was, as I say, a pre-planned setup organised by the police, the NCB and the government. There's no doubt about it. And when they were there, uh, they um, uh, um, they know, because we've seen the pictures, we know what uh, hundreds were injured, hundreds were beaten, hundreds, uh, it was indiscriminate beating that took place by the police officers upon the protesters. The um, uh, But then what followed was the most cordiest thing, which was the um, uh, the arrest of over 70 um, miners for riot. Riot is very rarely used. I am a criminal barrister by trade. I've never represented anybody in relation to riot. Riot is a, an offence that's very rarely used. 70 of them were arrested and charged, and over 24 for violent disorder. They were put in prison. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the, the film called Battle of Orgreave. Uh, it's a documentary, and it's an important documentary because there was a young journalist there who was able to film what was going on. Her evidence, her filming, became absolutely crucial to what was the true message that took place on that day. They were put on trial, and the first batch were put on trial at Sheffield Crown Court. And, they, um, and we've got to remember that these were young working men who found themselves in prison, found themselves waiting for trial. They'd lost their jobs, they'd lost everything, and um, by simply being arrested and being put on trial and being found in custody. And one by one they were told lies. The police had lied in their statements, the uh, film was doctored, and they were shown to be the aggressors. But I worked very closely with a man called Michael Mansfield, who represented these, uh, um, uh, uh, I think there were about seven or eight uh, on trial at the time, and they were able to expose the fake reports that had taken place in their hundreds by the police. Now let's jump forward to just two years ago, I think it was now, the Hillsborough inquiry because it's the same police force, the same people in charge that took place and what they uncovered in Hillsborough was that statements by the same police officers that were doing both had been forged, had been made up, had been doctored, that the evidence had been lost and that the people were being framed and the victims were being blamed the same way as the miners were being blamed. And I started off by talking about it, people called it a battle. It wasn't a battle. It was a, a um, uh, effectively um, a, 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 an attack by a state-sponsored police force upon the miners and upon the working classes. It wasn't a battle. It was one-sided. It was the police attacking them. That night on the news, on BBC, they actually doctored the, CC, the, the, the filming and they switched the chronology around and they showed that, they, that, that, they, they, that the miners had started it by chucking stones and rocks at the police 
and the, the, the police were retaliating. It, that was not the chronology. They deliberately manipulated the film on the BBC to show that the police were responding. And this is what came out in Hillsborough, the corruption of the South Yorkshire police force. And that is why now we need a public inquiry. That is why now we need these people, the police officers, the senior police officers, people like Duckfield who's, who was appointed by the senior police officer in charge of uh, Orgreave on that day, he appointed the senior police officer that oversaw Hillsborough. Uh, incidentally, I was reading that the police officer who, who arrested at an earlier stage, Arthur Scargill, if you remember he was arrested and convicted, he was at Hillsborough as well. The fact is it was the same police officers and what was exposed, the corruption that was exposed at Hillsborough needs to be exposed in a public inquiry. And I'm pleased to say that Labour is absolutely committed to that. It was in their last manifesto, it will be in their next manifesto. We will have a public inquiry into Orgreave. Hopefully it will be after the next general election when we will win the general election under Jeremy Corbyn and uh, we will be able to expose the police officers and we will be able to get to the truth. Now, that's my bit about Orgreave because we're now going to go on to a much lighter and much more great film which I've had the pleasure of watching earlier. Um, I had the privilege of going this year actually to Durham. It's the most magnificent event. Can I ask how many of you here have been to the, the gala? Okay, so about half of you. What are the, you should all go. Next year we're going as a constituency Labour Party and it would be great if you could all come with us. We're going to get our banner made and we're going to be going because as you will see by this film, it's a heart moving, it's a passionate and it's a beautiful film um, about um, and I think it's the largest collection of working class movement people across the whole of Europe uh, together to celebrate our history. So enjoy the film. I think it lasts for about an hour and a half and hopefully I'll see you for a drink afterwards. Thank you very much.